bringing health, wellness, and fitness ideas right to your speakers. With your host, Tyler Martin, learning from experts and average Joes alike. This is the Cracking Fitness Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another solo series episode. Today, we are going to talk about goal setting, which we've learned about goals our whole life, but I don't know if many of us actually sit down and set goals. So we're definitely going to get into that. But first, I want to give a shout out to a company called Black Label Supplements. Uh, It's a buddy of mine named Tyler Eggeman. He started this with some friends. Uh, it is a solid company and just a solid product, so I wanted to give them a little shout out. Their main product right now is called Pre-Hustle, and they call it a 3-in-1 pre-workout. Uh, Pre-Hustle. Um, really like their branding, really like what their tub looks like, just very crisp. And something that I really like is they tell you everything that's inside of it. So I believe that we should stay away from anything that has a proprietary, uh, like a proprietary label on it because they don't have to disclose everything that's in it. I think that that disclosure is extremely important, especially if you're an athlete and you're drug tested and everything. We've got to know exactly what is in your supplements. Then if you just want to be a drug-free athlete and you want to know exactly what you're putting in your body, super important to know what's in it. Uh, So the whole idea here, Black Label, Pre-Hustle was created to bring quality, simplicity, and results back to the supplement industry. Um, They talk about how it's not just another feel-good pre-workout, how each serving contains 24 grams of 16 clinically dosed and effective ingredients to increase your strength, endurance, energy, focus, and support recovery. Um, Like I said, I know the guys who started this company, I just think it's super solid. Uh, I don't routinely use a pre-workout. I do think that it's important that we give our body some time and we cycle off pre-workouts if if we are in them or are taking them. But when I do take pre-workout, it's usually black label. So they talk about pump and recovery. They've got citrulline, 6,000 milligrams, which improves strength, aerobic performance, and, and muscular endurance. Uh, They've got branched-chain amino acids in there, which is going to help fight your muscular fatigue. It's also going to help increase your lean muscle mass. Uh, Beta-alanine, that's strength, power, endurance, muscle growth. Creatine, which is probably the most studied supplement out there. It's going to help support uh, strength and growth of muscles themselves. Um, They've got caffeine in it, which obviously caffeine is extremely studied as well. Uh, Fairly clean stimulant. Um, I definitely don't recommend that you take this close to bedtime, um, definitely just in the morning, and you're going to feel it. It's, it's good stuff. So anyways, just wanted to give them a little shout out. Solid individuals, good guys, and uh, I appreciate their product. So let's dive into goal setting. We've probably heard of goals our entire life, but maybe haven't taken the time to actually sit down and think about our goals, what we want out of life, and how goals can actually help us reach where we want to be. So, there's so much to do with goals. So we're not gonna we're not gonna dive like extremely deep into it because we could probably read books and books and books on goals and how to set them and everything. But we're gonna talk about five rules that we can use when setting goals to make sure that they're actually going to help us get where we want to be in the future. So first, we need to set goals that actually motivate us. So first, it needs to be something that's important to us. Now, that may be fitness related, that may be relationship related, that may be uh, nutrition, overall health related, but all of these principles can overlap. And we always talk how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So if we can learn how to set a solid goal and reach that goal in one area of our life, then we can learn how to set and reach goals in other areas of our life. So find a goal that really, really motivates you. So right now, just thinking about it, a goal that would motivate me is increasing my bench press. It's not a really big deal. I know that 
I, I know that I can do it. Um, it's something that I, I can definitely do, increasing my bench press. Now, that motivates me because right now I know what I bench press. And I know that if I can increase my bench press, well, one, that number just goes higher, and I've set a personal record, so that's cool. Uh, but number two, that transfers to other areas in my fitness. So that's important to me. So set a goal that really motivates you. Maybe it's running that six-minute mile. Maybe it's that you know seven years ago you were in a size 34 pant and so your goal is to get back into that size 34 pant and so that we, we can set other goals around that to get you back to where you were. Um, it's super important because it gives you kind of a sense of urgency. Like, oh, this is motivating so I want to do this and then it it's kind of like a I must do this attitude which is very important. So once we have the idea of, hey, I want to set this goal and here's a goal that motivates me, then we need to break it down into something that's called a SMART goal. SMART is just an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So as far as, as, far as setting specific goals themselves, the goal needs to be clear and well-defined. If we have a vague or generalized goal, that's not really helpful because it doesn't provide us a lot of direction. So remember, your goals need to be specific. So as far as a bench press goes, I shouldn't just say, I want to bench heavy. We should set a specific goal of, I want to bench 405 pounds. Then we know the number. Let's say I'm benching 300 right now, then, that, then I know that I have to bench 105 pounds more. It is very specific. You could even get more specific and say it will be at a competition because we all know that uh, adrenaline's going a little bit more at a competition might be a little more apt to make that happen. But specifics. I will I want to run a 4-minute mile, which for me personally is not attainable, which we'll talk about in a second. Then they need to be measurable. So we can't just say, I want to bench press heavier, because that doesn't work. We need to have a measurable goal. If my bench press is 300, and I want it to be 400, and I add 30 pounds to the bar, and I know, okay, now I've increased by 30 pounds, I have another 70 pounds to go. It is measurable. Then it needs to be attainable. So is it even possible for me to bench 400 pounds? Is it possible for me to run a four-minute mile? Me personally, I don't have the body type uh, or the motivation to ever try to run a four-minute mile. It needs to be attainable. So we can't walk into the gym, we've never been there before, and then say, okay, my goal today is to bench 600 pounds. It's not going to happen. My goal today is to deadlift 600 pounds. It's, it's just, it's an unattainable goal. Now, at the same time, we've got to think about what we can attain. So for me to bench 400 pounds, that is possible. It is possible for you to be a certain pant size, depending on what that pant size is. Um, if you've been there in the past, you can probably be there again. So it needs to be attainable. We don't want to be setting goals that are eventually going to demoralize ourselves and just blast our confidence out the window. So they've got to be attainable. They also need to be relevant. So if I'm not focused on finances in my life, <clears throat> and I don't really care about being focused in finances, and I just set some crazy goal of like, you know, I want to have $150,000 in the bank, but then I'm never going to work on that, then that's not a relevant goal. So they need to be goals that are set to take us in the direction that we want to be in our life and something that's actually important to us. So if it's not important to us, it's not going to motivate us, right? So it's got to be relevant. Then it needs to be time bound. So I could say right now, I want to bench 400 pounds. But if I don't set a time that that will happen by, then it's it, it could be 10 years from now. We need to 
be realistic in our goal setting. And I keep just using bench press because it's just easy in my mind to say, okay, I want to increase my bench press to 400 pounds. So therefore, if we're going by specifics, um, my specific goal is to bench 400 pounds. It's measurable because I've set the number. It's attainable because I'm not super far off of that. Um, and it's something that I feel like my body is capable of doing. It's relevant because I care about it. And then you have to set the time. So I will bench 400 pounds by October 25th of 2020. Now I can even start working backwards. I can go, okay, well, October 25th of 2020, that's about two years. So now if I were to increase by this much and blah, 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 then boom, that is a goal that is smart. So smart goals. You can look it up. You can read all about it. It's great stuff. Now, something else that is super important is actually putting your goals in writing. This can be in your phone and you have temporary reminders. It's going to pop up and say, hey, don't forget your goal. Uh, you can throw it in a journal and just know that you can go back and read that journal. But I truly believe that setting goals in writing is extremely important to actually reach that goal in the future and to have the motivation to make it happen. Some people will even take their their goals and they'll throw it up like on their bathroom mirror or whatever. That way you're seeing it every morning. But just know that after a couple weeks, it you're going to see it and you're not really going to notice it. It's like when we're driving by and you see a billboard over and over and over. After a little while, you don't think much of it. And then they put a new billboard up and you're like, oh, hey, the new billboard. And you read it. And then after a little while, it goes away again. We've got to move those around so that we can continue to have that motivation. And uh, if, it's a, if it truly is a smart goal, you're going to be seeing that incremental progress that's going to make you want to continue on. So after we've written it down, then the idea is to make an action plan. So if my goal is to bench 400 pounds, I can't just say, hey, I'm going to bench 400 pounds by October 25th of 2020. Perfect. It's just going to happen. I've got to create a plan to make that happen. So if my goal is to, and after I've done the proper research, I say my goal is to lose 10% of my body fat so that I can be right at 10% um, instead of 20%, then I've got to create an action plan to actually make that happen. So how many calories do I need to eat in a day? Out of those calories, how much protein, carbs, and fat do I need to eat? How much do I need to work out? What do I need to do to get there? Actually making a plan to make it happen is Maybe one of the most important parts of all of this. And then number five is going to be stick with it. We've got to stick with it to make it happen. Um, we all know if we've been on kind of this weight loss journey, it's extremely difficult to stick with it. And that's okay. As long as we have the idea that each day we're going to be slightly better than we were the day before, that's what it's all about. We're not going to be perfect today. We're not going to be perfect tomorrow. But if we're moving in a good direction, then it can happen. So let's quickly go back through all of this. So one, we need to set a goal that actually motivates us. One that when it's written down, you read it and you're like, yeah, I've got to get to the gym. Or yes, I need to eat that cup of spinach. Or I've got to go grill up that steak because I know it's going, what it's going to do to my body. Then we need to set smart goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound. Then take that goal and write it down where you're going to see it and where you can go back to it. Get it in writing, get it out of your brain and onto paper to make it happen. You know what? Just throwing this out there too. Once you've truly thought out a goal, throw it out on social media. Show everybody that you're going to do it. And that's also going to give you a little bit of accountability. Accountability is extremely important. When people pay to have a coach, there are probably thousands of other coaches out there that can do almost the same thing, but it's the accountability that then gets people that progress. And so it's not so much the coach themselves, it's the accountability. Now I might've just kind of gone down a rabbit hole there because uh, it depends on the type of coach and it depends on what your goals are and it depends on a lot of different things, but accountability is huge. 
Number four is to make an action plan and to then work on that action plan and make it happen. So this is a step that is often missed in the process of, of goal setting. We can set a goal all we want, but if we don't actually create an action plan to make it happen, it's probably not going to happen. And then number five is stick with it. And I want to add to that, don't try to be perfect in the beginning. If we've actually set a smart goal, we know that it's going to be ups and downs, and that's perfectly fine. But stick with it. Whatever your goal is, it's probably going to take some time. And remember that you're going to have resistance, you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. It's totally fine. Just stick with it. Goals are fun. If you guys have any questions about goals, I've been setting, reaching, and failing at goals for many years. So I'm definitely happy to throw out some ideas that I've had in the past, um, ideas that I have now, things that I'm working on myself now. Reach out, talk to me, let me know about your goals. What do you guys have going on? And uh, is there any way that I can help you out? Have a great day. Remember, if you have any suggestions for guests on the show, I know we haven't even gotten uh, a, a guest up on the show yet. We've had a couple interviews, but still just going through the whole process of putting it all together, and uh, then we'll get them up. But if you guys have any thoughts, please let us know, and have a great day.